This is BH, and in this video, we'll demonstrate how to set up and use a Wacom tablet for the first time. When you interact with your computer, the mouse or trackpad is standard, and it's the comfort zone for most users. Doing specialized work, like editing an image in Photoshop, can require more than just a mouse. That's where the Wacom tablet comes in. If you're getting into photo editing, and you find the idea of using a tablet to be too intimidating, you'll be surprised at how natural it is to use, and how many features it can unlock in Photoshop. We'll walk you through the steps of setting up your tablet, demonstrating all the different uses that a pen tablet and pressure sensitivity bring to your photo editing. So today we'll be looking at the Wacom Intuos Pro Creative Pen Tablet. Opening the box, you'll see the Wacom Intuos Pro Tablet. This is the medium-sized tablet, which is the perfect size for most desks, and it fits into a laptop bag easily. There's eight buttons, as well as a dial wheel on the face of the tablet, and we'll walk you through how to set these up for your workflow. In the box, there's also the Pro Pen 2, which is a stylus type pen used to draw on the tablet. A base stand for the pen, which conveniently houses the nibs for the pen, as well as a USB-C cable to plug in the tablet to your computer. All you have to do is plug in the USB cable and you're ready to set your tablet up. Setting up your tablet is a breeze. There's numerous customizable features that we'll walk you through, so you can have the ideal setup for your workflow. First, you want to download the drivers and utility software for the Wacom tablet and get them installed. These are readily available from the Wacom website. Just enter your model number and it'll come right up. After the drivers are installed, you can use the tablet right away with the default settings. Holding the pen in your hand, hover about half an inch or so from the tablet and you can use the tip of the pen to move the cursor around the screen. There's four white corners on the face of the tablet and this represents the corners of your monitor. So wherever you hover the pen, this will translate to that area of the screen. When you press the tip of the pen onto the tablet, it'll register as a mouse click. You can use this as a normal mouse, double clicking to open up apps or navigate windows. As you can see, there's two buttons on the side of the pen, which can be customized, and we'll get into that shortly. First, let's open the Wacom tablet properties, and this allows you to customize your pen buttons, the express keys that are on the tablet, and the touch functionality, as well as so much more. Starting with the pen, there's several options to customize. The tip feel determines how sensitive the tip of the pen is. You can see there's a gauge to show how much pressure is applied when pressing the pen onto the tablet. With tip feel set to the middle, it takes a bit of pressure to get the maximum pressure applied. Moving the slider to soft makes the tip more sensitive and it maxes it out with a lighter touch, while moving it to firm takes a lot more pressure to get to the maximum. The sensitivity helps with pressure sensitive tools in Photoshop, such as the brush tool. Here's a quick demo of the different sensitivity levels ranging from soft, medium, and hard. I have the brush settings to have both the opacity of the brush as well as the size of the brush to be affected by the pressure sensitivity. At the softest level, it takes very little pressure to make a full size, full opacity brush stroke. I found this setting to be too sensitive for my taste. With the medium setting, I was able to make a gradual brush stroke by applying very soft pressure to a full press on the pen. You can see by both the size and opacity of the stroke exactly how much pressure was applied along the stroke of the brush. At the hardest setting, the stroke is similar to the medium setting, but it takes a lot more pressure to make a full brush stroke, and it was less gradual. For me personally, I like the medium sensitivity since it feels the most natural, but of course you can customize it to your liking. When using a mouse, you double-click on icons and other programs to open files and other operations. The double-click distance is the maximum distance in screen pixels that the screen cursor can move between clicks and still be accepted as a double-click. Increasing the double-click distance makes double-clicking easier, but it may cause a delay in brush strokes in some of your applications like Photoshop. Like a real brush, you can tilt the pen to change the angle of a brush stroke using the tilt sensitivity. Photoshop has many brush features that utilize the tilt feature of the pen. When the sensitivity is set to normal, you can tilt the brush pretty far to make adjustments to the brush. Turning up the sensitivity will make the same adjustments but in a smaller motion. Now, this feature is best for illustration or drawing where you want to make angular brush strokes like you would on a canvas. For photo editing, I generally keep this set to normal. As we mentioned before, there's two buttons on the side of the pen, both of which are customizable. You can set a button to a keystroke or a right click like you would with a mouse. 
everyone works differently, so you can find the right configuration that works best for you. I like having the top button set to the right click action, while having the lower button set to pan scroll. I like having navigation tied to my pen since I find myself scrolling around a lot when editing, so it feels the most comfortable to me. The top of the pen also has a button that's traditionally set to the eraser function. Like using a pencil in real life, you can flip the pen over and erase any work that you've done. You can adjust the sensitivity on the eraser just like with the pen tip. You can even customize this button to register as undo, which is very useful in Photoshop since it's so common to undo a mistake. The active area of the tablet will be set to the entire screen by default, or if you have multiple monitors, it'll map to both. There's a screen area and tablet area drop down menu. The screen area allows you to adjust what portion of the screen is affected by the tablet. If you use a dual monitor setup, you can drag the box to only one monitor, so the tablet only affects one monitor. The tablet area setting will reduce the active area on the tablet. You can customize the active area on the tablet, shrinking it down. This can be helpful if you don't want to make large moving motions around the tablet and you want to keep your arm mostly stationary while working. I almost always use a dual monitor setup, so I keep my screen area set to full and active area set to full. I find this works best for me, so the main monitor will be on the left side of the tablet and the second monitor will be on the right. The Intuos tablet has eight customizable express keys, as well as a touch ring that allows you to program any keystrokes or functions. These are very useful when editing or drawing, so you can work without needing to use a keyboard or a mouse. In the Wacom tablet properties, click on Functions to open the Express Key settings. From here, you can customize all of the Express Keys. By default, the bottom four buttons are programmed to Shift, Command, or Control, depending on if you're on Mac or Windows, Alt, and Pan and Scroll. These are for navigating in Photoshop and using different tool settings, such as making a color selection or making changes to a path. The top four buttons can open the settings, toggle the display settings, which shows what the buttons do, open the Wacom Desktop Center, and it also opens the Precision Mode, which will focus on an area of the screen and lower the sensitivity to make micro adjustments to the image. What I like about these buttons is that you can press your finger along them gently, which will actually show the buttons on your display, so you can see what they are without having to check in the tablet properties. Any of these eight keys can be changed to whatever function you prefer. For instance, a very common keystroke in Photoshop is Undo, which is Ctrl-Z or Command-Z on a Mac. I'll click on the button that I want to program to the Undo function, select Keyboard, and select Undo in the drop-down menu. You can also select Keystroke, which will allow you to program a custom keystroke. For instance, if I want to invert something in Photoshop and have it programmed to the tablet, I can press Ctrl-I and have that recorded as the keystroke to the Express key. The touch ring has four programmable functions, which are all controlled by your finger around the touch ring. By default, you can zoom, rotate, cycle Photoshop layers, and adjust brush sizes. This is very useful for navigating the canvas or doing any brush work, letting you make adjustments on the fly. I can scroll on the touch ring to increase my brush size, and then press the center button on the touch ring to change the scroll zoom, so I can zoom in and out of the image. Using the touch ring and express keys together allows you to use most functions in Photoshop without the need to touch your keyboard. This all-in-one system condenses all the uses of your keyboard and mouse, which will make your editing workflow much easier. If you still find yourself leaning on using a traditional mouse, the Intuos tablet also has touch functionality built in. This allows you to use the active area of the tablet as a touchpad, similar to a touchpad on a laptop. On the side of the Intuos tablet, there's a toggle switch to turn the touch feature on and off. In the Wacom tablet properties, you can make adjustments to the touch settings. You can tap to click, pinch to zoom, swipe left and right, scroll up and down, and even use four fingers to swipe between applications. Each of these controls can be toggled on and off in the Wacom tablet properties. You can also program customized gestures for different amounts of fingers used on the touchpad, such as having a keystroke for five finger touches or showing the desktop when swiping with four fingers, and you can do so much more. For beginners looking to transition from a mouse to a Wacom tablet, the touch functionality can be the biggest help when adjusting. Now, when you're editing with the pen tablet in Photoshop, I do recommend turning the touch feature off. If you have your hand rest on the tablet while making pen gestures, you don't want them to register as a touch gesture at the same time. The tablet does a good job of differentiating between a pen and touch gesture, but I still keep it off when I'm not using the touch. 
The greatest feature about the Wacom tablets is the pressure sensitivity. The Wacom Intuos tablet has 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity, allowing the pen to register a click ranging from a gentle touch to a hard press. This translates to different levels of pressure that can be used in the brushes in Photoshop. Now, Photoshop has a very wide range of brush tools, such as the healing brush, clone stamp tool, brush tool, burn and dodge tools, and more. All of these are configurable with pressure sensitivity options that allow you to work more efficiently when editing in Photoshop. To give a visualization on pressure sensitivity in action, let's look at a blank canvas in Photoshop. We'll use a black brush with the Wacom Intuos tablet, and you can see that applying different amounts of pressure will change the flow of ink onto the canvas as well as the size of the brush. Using pressure sensitivity with the pen, you can control the opacity, flow, and diameter of the brush, all without having to change settings or touch your keyboard. Here I made a squiggly line using the pen, starting with a very light touch going to a very hard press. Now you can see that the flow of ink is very low and the diameter is very small, but it gets larger and more opaque as I press harder. I'll do the same action with my mouse, and this translates to a 100% press, making the maximum diameter and flow of the brush. There's no refined controls when using a mouse, so you would have to constantly dial in the flow, opacity, and diameter of the brush to get it controlled just right. This creates a lot of back and forth, changing the settings, pressing the keys to get it just right, when you can just control it with the pen depending on how much pressure you apply. The easiest way to see if a tool can use pressure sensitivity is to look at the toolbar at the top. There, you'll see two symbols, one with a pen and a circle, and the other that looks like an airbrush. Both of these indicate that the controls of the tool can be adjusted with pressure sensitivity, and you can just toggle them on and off to activate the pressure sensitivity. In a real-world editing situation, this can apply to a variety of tools in Photoshop. Using the Clone Stamp tool, you can use the pressure sensitivity to control the flow and diameter of the clone stamp applied. When retouching skin on a portrait, you don't want to use 100% opacity when using the clone stamp, since it'll create obvious repeating patterns. Instead, you want to use a lower opacity or flow and blend in lightly with the clone stamp tool. The pressure sensitivity makes this a breeze without having to dial in the settings like you would with a mouse. In this image, I'm going to duplicate the layer and use the burn and dodge tools to make some local adjustments in the exposure on his face. I'll brush in the areas that I want to selectively brighten, such as his eyes. The pressure sensitivity allows me to make small adjustments by making very light strokes and larger adjustments with harder strokes. I'm going to use the burn tool to darken his eyebrows a little bit and I'm also going to touch up some of the hot spots around his face. Using just the clone stamp tool and the burn and dodge tool, I was able to make some very simple modifications to this image to really clean it up and make his face look a little bit more appealing. The pressure sensitivity made it a lot easier to make these adjustments without having to go back and forth with my keyboard and mouse. Now let's take a look at some of the adjustments that we can make with the brush tool. Go to Window, Brush Settings. This will open the Brush Settings window, which allows you to make adjustments to the brush and pen pressure settings. There's several menus to customize your brushes, and we'll demonstrate a few of the settings. The top menu is the brush tip shape, which allows you to select different brush shapes and customize the size, angle, hardness, and spacing between brush strokes. The most frequent settings you'll use are the brush size and hardness, which changes how hard or soft the edges of the brush are. A lot of retouching is done best with a very soft brush, which assists in blending either clone stamps or brush strokes. The next menu is the shape dynamics, so here we have settings such as size jitter, angle jitter, and roundness jitter. At the bottom of the window is a representation of the brush stroke. Currently, it's one fluid, soft brush stroke that has a consistent size throughout. This means that during the duration of the brush stroke, it'll stay consistent in size across the stroke. Changing the size jitter setting to pen pressure in the drop-down menu will change the shape of the brush stroke preview. Now we can see it has more of an arc shape to it. This represents the pen pressure from a very light touch to a very hard press, and it shows how the size of the brush stroke changes depending on the pressure. This is extremely helpful for a variety of reasons, since you can control the size of your brush simply by how hard you press down on the pen. This saves you the hassle of constantly toggling the brush to be larger or smaller, and can instead be controlled very quickly depending on pen pressure. The maximum size is dictated by the size of the brush, so using a larger brush will give you more room to work with the pressure sensitivity. 
The sliders allow you to adjust the minimum diameter size, which changes the diameter of the minimum pressure touch. You can also make adjustments to the roundness of the brush and adjust how the stroke is applied throughout. I generally use the default settings, which work best for retouching, but the customization is great for digital art and drawing. The transfer menu allows you to control the opacity of the brush, depending on the pen pressure. I like using this together with the size pressure, so you have a very low opacity small brush with a gentle press and a full opacity large brush with a hard press. You find that when you're retouching, you're blending a lot of elements together, so you're really just doing a lot of very gentle touches along the way. You keep using these gentle touches over and over, which will build elements in your image, instead of just doing one sweep with a very hard, high opacity brush. When you get the hang of using the pressure sensitivity, it really does help speed up retouching quite a bit. If you want to speed up the way you use your brush, simply hold the Alt and right click buttons with the brush open. This will allow you to change both the hardness and size of the brush. Moving the cursor up and down will change the hardness of the brush, while moving the cursor left and right will change the size of the brush. I use this all the time since it's so easy to do and it saves time while editing. Sometimes you may want a brush with a harder edge, such as cloning areas in an image that have repeating patterns that have to be hard around the edge. And then other times you have to adjust right back to a soft brush, so this makes that process that much easier. Now a lot of people watching this may be thinking, well why can't I use a tablet for something like this? And while tablets have come a very far away and they can be used as a peripheral when hooked up to a computer, they don't have the same latency or response as a Wacom tablet, and they do not offer the quality pressure control that you get from 8192 levels of pressure sensitivity with the Intuos. The Wacom Intuos has a built-in battery that charges while the tablet is plugged in with the USB-C cable. You can use the Intuos wirelessly by connecting the tablet to your laptop or desktop using Bluetooth. This is especially great for using with a laptop for editing on the go, without the need for a USB-C cable to keep it plugged in. With work from home becoming more standard, you can have your editing station fully portable to carry with you anywhere you go. The built-in battery of the Intuos can last up to 15 hours, getting you through a full day of retouching before needing to be recharged. While adjusting from a mouse to a pen tablet can be daunting, the sheer number of features and accessibility brought on by the Wacom tablets make them a must-have for anyone looking to retouch their images. The pressure sensitivity features unlock dozens of tools and features in Photoshop and other pro apps that assist in your workflow. This is B&H, and if you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe.